Hello guys, so this is Ravi Kam. I have 10 years of experience in Salesforce development and the admin. And I'm currently working with one of the premium brand in street and wine company in the capacity of Salesforce senior specialist. So during my tenure, I have done multiple projects in the Salesforce from customizations to sales cloud, service cloud, community cloud, the marketing cloud. And I'll continue this course as a Salesforce developer and for the Salesforce admin. So let me brief what we have done till now. So on the screen you can see there is one app we have created that is for the college app. Then after in college app we have created the objects. One is the students, another one is the colleges, and another one is the boxes. There is relationship between college and the students. So college is the parent object, the students are the child object. They are related to each other via the lookup relationship. Then we have the masters, which have a master detail relationships between the student and master. So here, student is the master and the master is the child record. All right, then we have seen the workflows and the flows. We have seen whatever we can do on the flow, on the workflow, similar thing we can do on the flows, as well as there are some extended functionalities available with flows. And we know Salesforce is going to retire the workflows, so they will continue with the flows. So we will, as well, we will learn the flow. So let me show you what we have done till now. So let me go back to the workflow and search the workflow which we have created for our purpose. So you come to the gear icon, click on the setup. In the queue find, search for the workflow. Click on the workflow rules. Now, you can see we have one workflow for us, which is more relevant for us. That is the college established here default years. Okay. So we'll just open this part. And here you can see what we are doing. So we are checking on the workflow that if established year is more than 2002, then we are updating two fields. One is for the update college department and another one is for the update colleges for us. Let's see what we are doing on these two actions. So open this part into different tabs. So now, Let the screen load, then we'll see what we are doing through this workflow. All right, so now our screen is going to pop up. So let's see what we have done on this field update access. So here, we are updating the number of department field of the college with 100, very straightforward field update action. Then after we go to the another action and we'll see there, we are doing a similar work, well, but for different field that is called number of scholars. And we are updating with 200, okay? So this is what we have done with the flow. Sorry, our flow. Now we'll check our flow and what we have done with our flow will verify there, okay? So 
So let me open the flow. And we'll check our relevant flow. Okay. So we are hoping that default department updates. So what we are doing here, we are checking with the whenever record is creating, then after we are password updating the flow and what we are updating, just click on this path. So here you can see we are updating the number of department field and the number of scholar field. Very straightforward thing. Whatever we have done with the workflow, we are doing by the flow. So this you can see here you have more of same things whatever you have done with the workflow you can do via the flow and uh, going forward we are going to use the flow but in the older organizations flow workflow will be active so there will be any issue or something you have to work with that or might be you have to migrate them all into the flows now apart from whatever Workflow is doing, flow can do. Top of that, flow can do some more things like calling the Apex classes and etc. So that will be the top of, of workflow. Okay. So this was the admin part we have done. Then we'll jump to the our Apex part. Okay, and we'll see what we have done there. So we have created one trigger. So what I'll do, I'll just open the developer console. Here I can come on to the developer console, click on that. So it will open the developer console for you. And in the developer console, we will verify two things. Our trigger, okay. So I'll just open the, click on the button and come to the trigger so you can see we have one policy trigger just open this policy trigger right. so here you can see we have the policy trigger okay. and this is the syntax for the trigger like it is starting with the trigger you have to give some name so we have given the policy trigger then own and the object name and then you have the event then you can see in the trigger we put the condition with our context variables. We already know what is the context variable. So this is the implicit variables for the trigger. Okay. So here you can see after update, we are calling some classes. So let me open this class for you. So here, just click on classes and search for your class or you can directly search for the old classes, okay. So call is triggered helper, this one, along with our test helper. I want both of the classes. So here you can see we have the class and uh, we have given the name like after insert. So it will be visible for everyone that when it is called and this part. Then after we are updating the logic. We just did four things. We have multiplied our class so that the whole logic will be you can see the whole operations will be follow very limited dml operations okay for queries they are also very much bulkified okay you are not going to fire the queries inside the loop so we have learned about the search force kernel limits so these are here then we can see the test classes we have done for this part so just open the test class. The trigger part, and this is the test class for that. And here you can see we have followed our best practice as discussed. First of all, you will take see all data should be false. Then after we have to set a two data. Then in your methods, 
cover your class then try to use the slope test and the test dot start test so that you will have those logic only which you want to cover and at the end you have to verify the exact values what your trigger is performing or your class is performing so you can verify via the system dot so that's it so this part we have covered apart from that we have learned about the batch jobs different administrators so these all some these are there and i'll expect you all guys go through these all ones and then we'll meet in the next class for our query and questions any more questions you can raise if you have something yeah thank you so let me stop recording